Welcome back to Sable. Uh, I played it a little bit this morning, and I didn't quite get as far as I wanted to. Uh, you can see in the distance, there's a big door at the edge of this valley. I suspect that at some point that door is going to open, and I'm going to be able to get out of here. But not until I have finished uh, building my hover bike. Or, uh, was it building? Yes. Uh, I'm not making a hover bike, I'm building a hover bike. That's what this wise machinist told me uh, in my last session. So what I need to do, because I think the, the folks watching me in the chat right now are, uh, it's a different set of folks than watch me in the morning. So none of them have watched me play Sable so far. Basically, I am a child who's about to go on sort of a, uh, a journey of self-discovery. It's some kind of like coming, coming of age custom. I'm supposed to get on a hover bike and explore. But my hover bike is kind of in bad shape. Uh, I think that the... Um, the tinkerer who's supposed to keep it in good shape uh, kind of failed in his duties. So uh, I'm only one part short of repairing it. And there's a small child who has stolen the part. And uh, I need to get him some beetles in order to uh, in order to sort of trade, trade with him and get the part back. So I can hover in the sky, by the way. Uh, this is a thing that I've uncovered. <laughs> I imagine, I don't know, maybe over time I'll win more abilities like this? I'm not sure. So there are two sort of clues to how I can get this part from the kid. One hint is that there's a cave system underneath the town where I live, um, where he might have a hiding place. So I'm going to run around the town and see if I can see a cave system. Uh, if I can't see a tunnel or anything like that... Oh, what's this? Aha! Maybe this is something. So I could get him the beetles that he's asking for, or I might be able to try to find where he's hidden the part in the caves. How is it that Sima manages to contain so much chaos and verve in so small a form? This is Sima. This is the kid who stole the part I need for my hover bike. Even now, there's something troubling uh, being dreamed up behind that mask. I know it. Uh, so he's just standing there. I guess he's going to let me come in here. Makes me think that maybe he's not hiding it here after all. This, it seems like we've found a hidden cave. Um, hello, I'd like to not be stuck on a skeleton. There we go. Is this the part? <gasps> An atomic calibrator, I got it! So, uh, I didn't need to hunt beetles after all. So, yeah, those of you who are new to this game will notice that the art style is really striking and surprising. You'll note that the game, like, the frame rate is actually really, really smooth. The world, you know, the art is deliberately simple, uh, which makes the frame rate, uh, you know, easier to smooth out, I think. But the character animations, they're all animated on, like, twos or fours or something. Like, the animation is really kind of jerky. It's meant to look like it's all hand-drawn, you know? I mean, it's clearly, you know, a 3D-modeled world. But I think they're looking for, like, you know, to sort of imitate sort of the uh, the, the feeling of, like, a hand-drawn cartoon from, I don't know, the 70s or something? Like, this, it's meant to evoke, you know, comic book art and a bunch of other things. It feels really, I don't know, striking and unique, I guess, is what I'd say. So, all right, so I've got all the parts for my bike. I don't actually know what to do next. Maybe, maybe I need to go talk to the machinist. Let's go talk to the machinist up in this tower and see if they can tell me what I need to do next. <laughs> Mama Tinker, I don't have a bedtime. So, you know. <laughs> it's actually pretty common for me to be up really late. I've, uh... I've always been just a little bit of either a night owl or an insomniac. When I'm anxious, especially, I have a lot of trouble sleeping. So being up late at night is actually really normal. I don't usually stream late at night, but uh, I'm usually up. Uh, for quite some time. I, I tend not to sleep very much. It's almost like there's some instinct I have deep in my subconscious that says the more I sleep, the shorter my life is. <laughs> because, you know, uh, I mean, you know, you, you count your, your life in years, but really it's only the, the time that you're awake that really counts. And so uh, I kind of have this weird sense that I want to be awake as much as I possibly can uh, because, you know, time is precious. Uh, so I don't like falling asleep if I can help it. I return to Caesar with the parts, and it's as if she waves me over. Oh, and it's as she waves me over that I feel a pang of sadness in my chest. When will I see her again once I'm gone? But because it's late and I'm tired, I'm probably going to be bad at reading. Uh, though maybe that's not a good excuse, because I'm often bad at reading. 
Well done, Sable. Yes, this is everything we need. Are you ready to assemble a bike of your own? I'm ready. Then let's head to the workshop. Caesar relaxes in the workshop. It isn't that she's particularly rigid or anxious ordinarily, but there's a certain calm beauty that one can only truly uh, that one only truly appreciates when Caesar's in her element. I wonder if it's this way for all machinists. What you must understand, Sable, is that not all the components you've acquired they fit together. Not by ch oh wait, again I'm just having a lot of trouble reading like a normal person. The components you acquired, they fit together. Not by chance, not by effort, but by nature. They belong to her. They have always belonged to her. All we're doing is assembling her from what she's already been. Interesting. So she used to call the bike they. Is she calling the bike her now? Has the bike become gendered? Is it taken on an identity? Uh, I nod and feel a soft buzzing in my ears. Among my, uh, among my clan, we believe that machines have names, held for ages like deep secrets, unheard by those unequipped to listen. We'll find one, uh, this one's name together. Alright, so do I need to grab each of these parts and assemble it on my bike? <laughs> Gliding bike wings. Alright. Um, can I... Can I get this thing? What do I need to do now? Push a button? No? Okay, I moved a thing over here. What? What am I supposed to do next? That thing looks like I'm supposed to interact with it, but I can't. I just... I don't understand. Seizu, help me. Have I broken the game? very confused now. The fact there's a dot here that does not turn into an interact button is weird. Oh, wait. Oh, sizu has got... Oh, now Sizu has an interact button. Sizu relaxes in the workshop. It isn't that she's particularly... Wait a minute. No, this is the same dialogue I had before. This is the same dialogue. Okay. Okay, so that's not any help. Because I've got this interaction icon here that is not expanding, it makes me think that... Oh! 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 There we go. Okay, yeah. I think there is a bug here. Uh. Gliding bike booster. Okay, so I'm just installing pieces, and... The interaction is not quite working! No! Oh, wait. Oh! Oh! I've knocked it down. Oh, and I could just push the button on it. Okay. And then I install that here. <laughs> Gliding bike front. Okay, so each of those components goes in a different part of the bike, and then I can assemble the whole thing. It seems it's inconsistent about when it gives me an icon to prompt me to push buttons, and when it doesn't. I wonder if that's just a bug in this location, or if it's... I need to get used to the idea that sometimes there just won't be an icon. Okay, so I've been riding around this just ramshackle, crappy bike. Now that I've got a better one, maybe the travel is going to feel a little better. Hey, listen! Cizo tilts her head a moment, leaning closer to Simoon. All at once I know the hover bike's name, Simoon. I say it in a whisper to let Cizo know. Simoon. Simoon. Well done, Sable. What does it mean? You should ask her yourself. Caesar looks entirely serious. The bike, to my enduring surprise, says nothing, even when I lean close. I tell Simoon that I'm eager to get uh, to know her better, and Caesar looks quite proudly at the both of us. You're ready, then, for the gliding. May all the gods turn their faces from you, Sable. An odd blessing, perhaps, but Caesar's prone to such things, and I can read in her tone that it was meant quite sweetly. You must learn to lin listen to Samoon, to care for her. Seek out my fellow machinists on your travels, Sable. They'll teach you the art of machine whispering. Oh, and here, take this. It's a machinist badge. You'll meet plenty of my ilk in your gliding. Show them your worth, and they'll give you more, uh, more badges. I thank Cizo twice for good measure, and give a bow. I'm ready. Oh, I, 
should speak to Jari. Okay, let's go back to Jari. Where are we relative to the rest of the town? Okay, down here. Cool. Oh, I am Fenwick says that uh, they've just gotten started playing uh, Detroit Become Human. I played a little bit of that. I do like um, Quantic Dreams games, in theory. Uh, I, I didn't get super engaged in that one, but I think it was more just a lack of time. You know, a game that requires sort of... Uh, that's kind of slow-moving and sort of takes a long-term commitment to get into it can be tough for me because I always feel, you know, so anxious about my time and so... Um, I feel like there's so many games I need to play. Oh, right. I need to buy a map from the cartographer. She gave me some money for that. I think the best way to do that is to climb up here and then float down. So you can climb in this game like Breath of the Wild, which is kind of fun. I think this game is ultimately aiming to give you a pretty strong sense of freedom. Where was the... There's the cartographer. Hmm. Uh, Travi suggests that I should play Windbound at some point. I think I might have already played Windbound. Is that... I think I have. I think I did a... I think I might even have a couple of videos of it. Greetings, child. I'll buy that map. Perfect. Let's trade then. There's an Uber map. There we go. It's bought. I thank Jordan for the Uber map and all its vast possibilities. Something about this makes it feel more real. Good luck on your gliding, Sable. I still remember mine. I asked how it was. Short. I knew since I was a boy that cartography was for me, but I spent a little extra time out there just to enjoy the world. Speaking of, keep an eye on the skies, eh? Plenty of my colleagues out there, and they'll have more maps to sell you, from Hakoa to the Sodic Waste. I thank Jordan for the tip and say goodbye. Farewell, child. Okay, so it looks like I'll probably be trying to find machinists to, like, get upgrades to my bike. Uh, and then I'll be looking for cartographers to get maps of the world. I should probably have a look at my map. And see if... Oh, okay, yeah. So I think the cartographer just gave me a detailed map of Ibex Camp, which is where I've started here. But there's a lot more map out there for me to find. Let's go talk to Jadi. See if I can take off. I return to Jadi with a new lightness. And it makes the weight of my departure feel heavier still. What a strange day. Sable, is that a badge you've got there? Cizo gave it to me. I tell Jotty that Cizo gave me the badge. Then you must have earned it. Well done. I give a bow of thanks. Well, Sable, if you keep this up, you'll be headed for the Mask Caster in no time. I try to think about going to a Mask Caster, but it seems impossibly far away. Imagine choosing what I want to be. Imagine choosing what I want to be forever. I know what you're thinking, but don't worry about it. You get plenty of badges while you're out there, and once you've got three alike, you can trade it in for that mask. But don't feel like your first mask is your final choice. The gliding is about freedom and exploration. I suggest you claim as many masks as you wish. This is making the game sound like it's going to be more open-ended than I expected it to be. Only at your final ceremony will you be asked to choose one. How will I choose one? You'll have to feel it out, but when you know, you'll know. Now. The tone of her now puts the butterflies back in my stomach. With all of this done, there's only one thing left. It's time, then, isn't it? Time to walk through the face door of the Temple of Rohana. There you'll assemble your gliding mask and go. There are things I wish to convey to Jadi here. Depths of love and gratitude and fear and worry and hope. I've, and I thought myself unable to speak any of it in words. I know she understood. Before you leave, child, I've made you these. They're dyed with the traditional Ibexi maroon, and I hope to provide you great comfort out in the desert. When you leave today, you will no longer be Sable, clan child of the Abexi. You'll simply be Sable, and the rest will come. But no matter what you are, no matter where your journey takes you, I, al I will always know you. I will always love you. And I will see you again. I don't know where my journey will end, but I know where it must begin. 
and I'm ready. So I should head to the temple to begin my gliding. So did she mean the temple where I started? So one thing I did notice while I was poking around in the UI, I've got this screen here where I can customize myself, and they've got, like, explanations of what these clothing, what these pieces of clothing are. Like this child's mask, for instance. A blank-looking lo mask worn by all children of the dunes. Most kids customize their for, theirs for fun. The more traditional clans frown on that sort of self-expression. It's interesting that, you know, I've heard, I've seen multiple sort of fantasy worlds where... It, you know, entire societies all wear masks all the time. I think that Brandon Sanderson um, had a society like that in um, the later Mistborn books. Um, and it's kind of interesting, the, the idea of just always covering your face and treating that as like, I don't know, almost like a modesty issue. Oh, I am Fenwick. I, I have tried Spirit Fair. This is another game that was sort of a casualty of my um, impatience to play every game that's out there. Uh, I played a couple sessions of it, I think, on my stream, but uh, I, I didn't. I never took it any further. But I have seen a lot of people get very into it and, and recommend it really strongly. Um, so yeah, def definitely a, a worthwhile game, uh, especially if you know, um, like lo-fi, uh, like uh, whatever, like chill emotional journeys is sort of uh, your, your deal. I think Spirit Fair is probably a, a pretty good game along those lines. Uh, okay, so anyway, I guess maybe I'll switch to this sort of traveler's outfit. And some fancy pants. Oh, check me out with my fancy pants. Now, I think that when the screen gets really desaturated like this, I think that means that it's dark. Like, they always want everything to be visible. And I think they're really trying to cultivate this sort of sketched and, and watercolored sort of look. Um, but yeah, I, I'm pretty sure we're seeing, like, a night sky up above us. Because otherwise, it, yeah, because to be this desaturated, you think it's either got to be cloudy or it's just a really stylized night. So I think that's the moon. I think this is nighttime. Now, I've got that... I think I've got my older glider. Do I still have my older glider bike? Let's see. I do, but since I've just built a new one, I'm pretty sure it doesn't matter. So let's just head up to the temple. Ooh, I Am Fenwick is currently reading Brandon Sanderson's uh, Reckoners series. I like that one a lot, actually. It's kind of too bad that there are... Um, I, I don't know. I felt like it would have made a pretty good um, TV series, except now we've got The Boys, which has got a really similar premise. Um, and so I don't think you'd, you could make it now with, uh, in the same world as The Boys. It would just feel, I don't know, like uh, too many things in the same space. But yeah, I really enjoyed that one. Sanderson is really good at like coming up with worlds where you could have like a crazy twist at the end of three novels in succession and have each one be crazy like you think like you know maybe you would come up with a world that has one twist in it and if you reveal it at the end of the third of the first novel then the rest of the novels are just sort of playing out the consequences but like every single one of those novels has some crazy twist crazy reveal at the end and uh <laughs> he's really good at coming up with stuff like that i'm, I'm impressed with the guy oh so this face opens up now I'm walking into whatever this place is. So we've got some elevators. So what do I need to do with these? Climb up and stand on them, maybe? So yeah, this game has got a climbing mechanic, a lot like Breath of the Wild, but a space like this with lots of like sort of suspended platforms doesn't make that an easy technique to use. Just try to okay, I'm just gonna float down here because I mean, there's got to be a way up, right? I can see what looks like a ramp down. It's everything. Everything here is concave so that little diamond next to me is my stamina meter so 
So I can always climb so much before I'm exhausted. So this might actually be the more accessible platform. At least I can climb up those stairs. Uh, but I've got a ceiling over my head here. Oh, ooh, what's over here? Get up there. Come on, Sable. Sable's an interesting name for this character, mostly just because everyone else in this world has names that sort of evoke, say, like, the Arabic language? Like, a lot of them have that kind of... that kind of sound to them. But Sable is like an English word. It's... It's interesting. Maybe it's intentional. Like, maybe I'm meant to feel like I don't really belong in this village and I'm meant to go somewhere else far flung. I'm not sure. I am Fenwick says the color of this room is really interesting. Yeah, just everything they've been do they do with sort of the desaturated colors in this entire world is, is, is pretty interesting. Okay, how do I get up here? Maybe I can climb this column? I don't know if I can go high enough. Before I get tired. Come on. Yes. Okay, cool. Oh. Nope. Oh, no. No. Oh. At least there's no falling damage. Let's try that again. All right. See if I can do a slightly better job of this. The jump is just a little bit unpredictable. All right. Go a little higher. I actually am pretty surprised by how much like Zelda this feels. I don't know what I was expecting it to feel like, but... Yeah, it does feel different than I expected. Because uh, most of what I saw in, like, the sort of early trailers and things like that was... Oh, I think I know how to get up there now. I think I can kind of see it. Yeah, all right. Anyway, it was mostly riding the hover bike. So I was kind of expecting this to be mostly, like, traveling around over land, and that was it. But... It's a mix of traveling around over land and getting into tighter spaces and solving, you know, level design puzzles, which, oh wait, can I, I can't, okay. Okay, looking from across the room, it seemed like this was where I needed to go, but now I'm looking, there's like overhangs everywhere, how am I going to get up there? Oh, oh, I know, I know. I'm not, I'm not meant to climb all the way up this column. I'm meant to travel around this column and drop down onto this platform. Okay, got it. Uh, here? Feels a bit like I'm on a planet with lower gravity. <laughs> Like, my, my jump is floaty, and uh, there's no fall damage. Maybe this is a world where things like glider bikes are easier to do because there's just less gravity overall. Oh, this is weird. <laughs> it's kind of creepy. Is that my new face? All right, wh wh where was that happening exactly? Ooh, interesting, a busted statue. But the faces still appear where the faces would go. Interesting. I love the sense that this world has got, like, you know, it was built a long time ago, and it's just been 
crumbling ever since, but people still live here, and people still, you know, care about this place, despite the fact that they just don't have the resources or the technology to, to maintain it. Alright, I've got an Ibexi mask now. Do I put it on? I guess so. Alright, so how did I get in here and how do I leave? I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so I feel like I came in facing this statue, right? So it must be up there. I don't see an entrance, though. Oh, is that... Oh, that's where I came in. Yeah, all right. How do I get back up there? Oh, there's ladders. Ladders are way better than puzzles. Hey there, awesome Twitch dude. I'm going to respond to your request for a flex uh, the same way I always do, by ignoring it. Can I hold B to go faster? Nope. Alright, let's show everybody my new Satan mask. Hey everybody, I found out what my future is. I'm going to be the devil. Ha, I couldn't do that the first time I came in here. Uh, awesome Twitch, dude. I have already tried Deathloop. Uh, Deathloop has actually been the game that I've been playing whenever I'm not streaming. Um, I want to understand the game a little better before I actually stream it so I can talk about it intelligently. So I've been playing it on my own time. It's tough, though, because the game is really, like... It's kind of intense. Like, it takes a lot of my attention and emotional energy to play it. So I usually only play, like one time period at a time. The game is broken up into mornings, noons, afternoons, and evenings, and I'll usually just sit down and play one of those before either, you know, I get nervous that I'm going to get interrupted by parenting duties, or I'm just emotionally tired. Uh, so, at some point I'll make enough progress that I'll want to stream it. It actually performs surprisingly well on my PC, and it actually, w it actually allows me to stream it, which not all games will. So this is my email box. I'm not sure why we're looking at that so closely. Logging in. Hello, Sable. Jotty's voice echoes strangely through the machine, yet it still warms me. Well, Sable, this is it. By the time you hear this, we will have gone. The gliding is a journey that must begin alone. There's a certain nuance lost in transmission, and for that I'm grateful. It would be far too much to hear the cracks in her voice and not run weeply into her arms and stay forever. But I'm ready. And so I close my eyes and listen. But though you go by yourself, you're not without friends. You are not without family. And you are not without love. These things you will always carry with you as you do your mask. And I know I'm not supposed to do this, but if I were you, I might go see Utari. They're the machinist at Burnt Oak Station, and among Cizo's closest friends. Utari's a good contact to have on one's gliding, and a fine way to get another machinist badge, machinist badge if you're so inclined. Only a suggestion, though. As for us, I'll send another message once we've returned to the Ewer. So keep an eye on the post boxes, and try not to forget us. She takes a long breath, and I forget that things as easy as breathing could ever exist. The world is waiting, Sable. Good luck. So everyone leaves the town while I'm in the temple so that I take off on my own, and I can't hug anyone and get sad. Wee. All right. So, I assume it's not too hard to find my uh, hover bike? I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna run? All right, let's just run. Okay, I've called out. What did that do? Oh, gosh! All right, I guess that's my hover bike. <laughs> I want to get a good shot of the hover bike here. There we go. I think that might make a good thumbnail. There we go. I 
wonder, should I try to ride it through that uh, ring one more time? As I do with my other hover bike. Wow, this is so much smoother than the other bike that I've been using. So I think I saw in the distance, yes, that giant door is open now. So I guess this is it. Time to leave the valley. Wow, this bike is really slick and really different from the old one. Here we go. Oh, I can still control the bike. Nice. Come to me, show us the way. I'm caught between the wisdom parts of the unknown. I don't It's kind of cool they let me keep going. What is up with this soundtrack? It's haunting. Oh, I've got no idea where I'm going. <laughs> but I kind of don't care at this point. Just vibing. <laughs> awesome Twitch dude points out that this uh, looks a little bit like. Oh gosh! It's a little bit like Tron. I feel like the characters in Tron would have been happier if they lived in a world like this, though. Well, as I might have anticipated from the map, this area is a lot larger than my previous area. Okay, so we've got... This is probably the machinist that uh, Jody was recommending that I visit. So I guess we'll... I guess we'll head north. remind me of sort of the multiple simultaneous vocals going have I heard music like this before I want to know what artist this is you know what it, it kind of reminds me of that Sigaros song that was um, used to promote that one standalone Prince of Persia game I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but it was a good song. And a really good trailer, actually. And the art style for the game, actually, was not that dissimilar from this one. Alright, so this machine is still this direction. Wow, this world is large. I guess you can, make, you can afford to make a world big when uh, there aren't a lot of features to it. Pretty relaxing. Ooh, ooh, there's another cartographer up there. That's what uh, I think I meant to assume these these balloons represent. So I wonder if each settlement in this world has got a cartographer and a machinist for me to talk to to, like, get missions and earn progression? Hey there, Dapper Stash Theater. So you said this reminds you of Levenhurst. Do you mean the music reminds you of Levenhurst? I don't think I've heard that name before. I, I, I assume you're talking about the music and that's a band? If not, let me know. I'm curious what you're, what you're telling me here. Okay. So I think this is not where the machinist is, but... I think I might be able to get up there. Let's see. Okay, so I am Fenwick looked it up, and apparently, um, are you saying that the music I was just listening to in the game was by a band called Japanese Breakfast? That certainly sounds like the kind of name that this band would have. Okay, 
Okay, so I'm assuming that since I've gotten this far, there's going to be enough stair steps for me to get all the way up. Hopefully, if I screw up, I won't fall too far. Oh, maybe I should wait for my stamina to recharge before I start trying to climb. Oh, they don't have the most graceful um, handling of um, me almost falling. Or like being like on like a 45 degree angle. Like they know how to make me climb up something sheer. And they know how to have me run on the ground. The transition up to... Oh, please, please don't fall. Up like a curved slope is a little rough sometimes. Hey there, cartographer. How you doing? I greet the cartographer shyly, a little cowed by how alone we are up here and how intimate that sometimes feels, despite it being so much about, uh, so much about of my gliding. What? Wait. It being so much about... I think that sentence might not make sense. She responds with what sounds like a warm smile. Hello there, glider. Thank you for taking the time to climb all the way up here. Surveying gets a little lonely sometimes, you know. I tell her I do, given how lonely I can get on the sand sometimes. I hope Samoon doesn't hear. So then, what is it you need? Can I buy a map? Here's what I have. Okay, so I can get a badge and a map. I've got 270, so I guess I might as well buy both of these. I'm not sure what the badge is for exactly, but... Uh, now I've got it. Thanks, Glider. Goodbye. Wait, but there's something else I could ask you. What's worth a look nearby? I ask if there's anything worth a look nearby. She chuckles to herself. Of course. You don't think I'm standing here for nothing, do you? Have you been to the Great Wind Tower yet? Get up there. You can see for ages. And Burnt Oak Station is close by as well. You'll never guess why it's called that. I think about it, but she goes on before I can shout my prediction. And if you're a fan of insects, there's a gigantic Hercules beetle nest nearby. You know, rumor has it they can lift 100 times their own body weight. I can help you. Uh, can I help you, Glider? Uh, nope, I'm good. I think they're cartographer. No problem, Glider. Okay, I think I left my... Yes, there's my bike down there. Here we go, bike. So we'll go to Burnt Oak Station, and now I know that I'm also looking for a place called... I forgot what she called it now. Whatever. There's more places to look. And I've overshot my bike. There it is. Wah! Nope, it's fine. I can float whenever I want. Awesome Twitch Dude says uh, that Midnight Mass is free of jump scares and that I should check it out. Uh, is it really free of jump scares or are you just telling me that so that I'll check it out? Right now, I've just started watching Foundation. Uh, I'm on episode two of that. I've also just started watching Why the Last Man, which uh, I really liked the comics. I didn't read all of the comics, but uh, I read like the first, I don't know, several volumes. Uh, and I really liked that story too. So, and they've done a really good job of adapting it. And I don't know, it's, it's interesting. Like that not only is there only one man left alive on earth, but uh, he's such a, weird little douchebag. <laughs> it's actually kind of funny. It's like, oh my gosh, they're really making me feel the despair of the female population <laughs> by having this the last surviving man be such a I don't know, immature weirdo. What? Oh, whoa. That's a cool bike. Wait, can I, should I park my bike up here? I'm going to park my bike up here. Wait, I can strafe? <gasps> I didn't know I could strafe. Cool. Oh, wait. So A is drive? Wait, I just pushed A when I got close. I guess that's just the button for pulling away from the parking space. I don't know what that was. Anyway, let's try getting off here. I feel like I've failed to park. Whatever. Ooh, I found some stock figs. Not not sure what those are, but I've now stolen them, so I'm a very upstanding citizen. 
All right, the machinist. Look, oh, it's a machinist. Look me over. You're late. Uh, for what? For our meeting one another. You ought to have come here sooner. I asked the machinist uh, how they know me. I do not know you. Not yet. Perplexed, I wait for them to explain themselves, but they seem to wait for the same. Briefly, I feel a hint of shame as I remember times that I've been late among the Abexi, things that I slipped up in doing. But I dismiss my doubts and recall that I have no idea who this strange machinist is. I ask them. My name is Utari. Of immediate relevance to you is that I am a friend of Sizo. I ask then if Sizo alerted them to my impending arrival. Perhaps she looks out for me, sets waypoints and oases along my gliding. A comforting thought. No, 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 it was your hoverbike. I heard it for the first time months ago, and I felt the shape of its voice. Of her voice. Sorry. I tell Atari that it was not Samoon they heard, for Sizo and I only built her a few days hence. They wave their hands at me in a hurried dismissal. Did Sizo teach you so little? The voices of our machines are eternal, more ancient than even their forms. I hear them, as I always have, and yours, I thought, would revisit me sooner. But here we are. Now let us speak of why you have come. Our needs converge atop the wind tower. That's the other place they mentioned. Tell me more. Something has stopped the tower from working. I was hours away from going to see it myself, but you and Samoon came after all. Go there, mend what is broken or soothe what is hurt, and I will give you what you seek. I ask Utari if they know what I seek. I omit that I might not. A direction. I'll be waiting for you. Travel swiftly and safely. I say goodbye to Utari. All right, well seems like that's a direction I could go. Okay, so there's something I need to remove from a tower. Let's see what else is going on here, though. Hello, person. Well met, Glider! Uh, we had goats in my clan. Ah, so you're familiar with their temperament. I suppose you're a, uh, an Ibexi? Say hello to uh, Umar and Jari for me. Well met, Glider. Uh, what's in that glass vial? <gasps> oh, I made this. It's a color palette for a hoverbike. Inspired by my work as a herder. Here, take some. I insist. I'd be very proud to see you riding a bike with my colors, Sable. Well met, Glider. Uh, see you around. Okay, so it looks like the, the machinist gave me the option to customize my bike. I haven't really uncovered any parts for the bike, but maybe now that I've got paint for the bike, I can use that. Okay, so I've got all these parts. Oh, but yeah, I can change out the colors. Oops. I just left, I guess. Okay, I accidentally left. But I did... Oh, oh, it's right here. I recolored it, but unfortunately all the colors are desaturated, so I can't... Hold up. Let's make sure that I actually did that successfully. Okay, so this... Oh, wait. It just took a second to open up. Oh, okay, yeah. The UI is broken. But, okay, I can make changes to the colors. You can see the colors updating. But the color selector is broken in the UI. Interesting. Yeah, so I have been finding bugs in this game. Not surprising. It's got a small team, and it's really hard to keep up with everything when you've got a small team. Uh, yes, awesome Twitch dude. I did show, I did do a YouTube video where um, I was using our cheat menu constantly. I'm not the only one that do, that's done that. The, the secret's out that we have a cheat menu. Glider, welcome. Come view my wares. I would like to trade with you. Smashing! Have a gander at my goods. Ooh. Okay, so I could buy a bunch of bike parts. I don't have enough money to buy all of these bike parts, though. I don't think. No, I don't. So let me wait on that a little bit. I'll come back later on and see if I can buy all those parts and have a beetle bike. So what else around here is interesting? Can't interact with this guy. Ooh, no outline on that. Oh, interesting. Except against certain backgrounds. Man, this world is just so well realized. The art, the art style they've developed here is so unique and striking. I might have talked to everyone I can talk to. Oh, I got a post box. Oh, 
Nope, I don't have any messages. Okay. Well, I guess we'll head out to the wind turbine. See what I can accomplish there. Wah! All right, so it says it's this way. Hoping the sun comes up soon, I'd really like to see what my bike looks like with this new color scheme. Oh yeah, I should also ask about the badges. Yeah, so I got the sense that you can trade badges in for things, like like maybe mask pieces or, or masks mm. or something like that. I got I got that vague sense from Jotty. Um Okay, so I think the turbine must be beyond beyond this. Yep, it's still ahead of me. In fact, I can probably see it on the map. It's over here. Oh, it's a ways away. I gotta go, like, around my, uh... The Ewer, I guess, is what my original hometown was called. I've got to go around the Ewer. <sighs> awesome Twitch Dude asks, What is the best game you've played recently? Oh, that's a hard question. <laughs> I'm going to... Uh, <laughs> to help inform that, I'm going to have to open up my uh, YouTube channel here. I mean, obviously, State of Decay 2, you know, ranks up there. Um, it was actually really fun to go back to Darkest Dungeon uh, with Cloudcraft showing me uh, a lot of the uh, insights into playing the game that I had missed before. Uh, that's a, it is a really cool game. And, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, I, I probably didn't give it enough time or enough credit because I struggled to, to sort of, you know, make some of the harsh decisions you have to make in a game like that in order to survive. Um, I am really actually liking Deathloop. Um, again, you know, it's, it's the kind of game where it's intense enough that I have trouble devoting a lot of time to it back to back. But, uh, but it is really cool. I love the, the rapport between the characters. Um, that's a lot of fun. I don't know what else. What other stuff have I played recently? Actually, one thing I've been looking forward to playing on the stream, which I haven't yet, is uh, Timberborn. It's a it's a colony sim, but it's one with like, you know, you're building a lot of like vertical things in order to control a fluid simulator. It's it's actually um, kind of reminds me weirdly of um, Oxygen Not Inclu with Oxygen Not Included. Um, which is another game, another colony sim built around a fluid simulator. Should I, should I try to ride my bike up this thing? Is there a, is there a ramp that I can take it up? I'm gonna orbit this turbine a little bit. Oh, I am Fenwick wants to know um, if I've played this War of Mine. Yes, um, I've played the crap out of this War of Mine. Of course, because I keep, basically, I keep coming back to it again and again. Um, and each time I come back, I kind of, I'll, I'll often come back on a new platform and start all the way at the beginning. So most of the scenarios of this War of Mine I've never played. I just keep playing the opening scenarios again and again and again. But there's so, I mean, that game is so emotionally exhausting. It's actually really hard. Like, once I've played one like session or like one um campaign of it do you call it a campaign what do you call it one storyline one community one whatever whenever i've played one of it um i need to take a break for a while because it's just it's just emotionally exhausting to play that game more so for the characters than for the player but still it's the same thing with um frostpunk like man those folks really know how to make games that just tire you out. Oh, awesome Twitch dude. I've got no idea. So yeah, awesome Twitch dude is remembering a time that I uh, fell asleep while playing a game because it was just so late at night. I don't remember what game it was. Sorry, I can't help you find that. It's. I don't think I looked like I fell asleep properly uh, on the stream, but I suddenly lost my train of thought because I fell asleep for like a moment kind of the way you fall asleep when you're driving sometimes you just fall asleep for a moment bec but because of the break in your consciousness it makes you kind of panic a little bit oh that didn't work hold on let's try this again 
And this time, I won't try to float across this gap, because that doesn't work. I will climb across this gap. Hello there, person whose name I can't read. Chrono Hunter. Sorry, whenever Twitch decides to make somebody's name blue, it's illegible against the dark background, and I cannot read it. So, no fault of yours. It's completely random who's whose uh, name ends up being blue. But whoever it is, I can't read it. Okay. I guess I took a wrong turn there. This is probably where I need to go. Yes. Just like Breath of the Wild, so much of this game is, like, traveling to, like, distant points of interest and then figuring out a climbing puzzle to get on top of them. They've done a good job of making this game, you know... This game does a lot of the good things that Breath of the Wild does, but it's also clearly got a personality all its own. All right, well, I'm in the wind tower. Hopefully there won't be too many opportunities to um, fall off of the wind tower because um, if I do, it'll probably be a big trip to get back up here again. Ah, oh, the space is complicated. I'm worried about missing something. I assume I can climb up here. Ooh, is that a treasure chest? I happen to like treasure chests, mostly because of the treasure. Okay, so it's out here. Can I? Yes, I can. Bouldering top. Though they won't help me climb further, the hand wraps and lightweight fit of this gear are great for making scaling mountain heights more comfortable. Okay, so is that just, like, lore? I assume that they were deliberately saying this won't really help, but <laughs> it's mountaineering gear, but it's not actually going to help you mountaineer. Okay, so can I get on this ladder? No. No, I have failed. Hold on. Let's climb up again. There you go. Oh, really? Crystallize just told me that in Twitch I can turn on a feature called called readable colors? Where? I don't see that. Chat appearance. Readable colors. Wait, what? Why would that not be the default? You'd think you're making a you're making a chat app. Like, have readable be a... F Why is that not a fundamental design imperative? <laughs> Why is that an option to make the chat readable? Come on. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Like, if somebody wants the chat to be unreadable, then give them an unreadable option. But <laughs> that blows my mind. Thank you, Crystallizer. But that blows my mind that they would... They clearly know how to make it readable, but they have that not be on by default. What is wrong with you? Okay. Oh, whatever. Uh, Senior Sausage asks, uh, for State of Decay 2, will we consider making new map, uh, new bases for the existing maps? Uh, that's not something that we've considered in the past. It will be interesting to see, like, as we sort of, you know... I. I think we might be at our limit for new maps, just because, I mean, we've got a lot of real estate in this game. So thinking of what to do next, I mean, that's that's an interesting suggestion. Um, I'm definitely not, not going to make any promises along those lines, but that is an interesting suggestion. Um, it would be tough. I mean, that would be a pretty dramatic change. And also, like, if we made a change like that, it could really impact people's existing save games. You know, because your save game will make a lot of assumptions about what's already in the map. And um, you know, and what you've claimed, and what's where, and uh, if we made a bunch of changes midstream, that could cause some problems. I mean, we actually, you know, just changing the nature of some of our outposts um, for the outpost upgrade was kind of like potentially destructive enough. That's why we made it so that the the new outpost um, identities wouldn't kick in unless you changed maps, which was kind of a complicated way to do it on our end. But it was more, it was better than just having things, you know. Uh, sort of rugs pulled out from under you uh, because we changed the map, you know, uh, on a save you already had. So that might be kind of tough. Um, so I'm definitely not going to make any promises. Though, I, I, you know, I can see why that, why that would be a compelling idea. 
it would kind of breathe new life into maps that people have explored before. Let's see here. All right, so I'm trying to get the turbine to turn. So there's the, I wanna get a nice little shot of the turbine there. I can't, it's kind of weird. Anyway, um, all right, so I guess I just need to get inside the tower. Can I float to that wooden platform from here? Let's see if I can and hope I don't lose too much height if I fail. Okay, I can. Good. Now let's hope I can climb this. Yes. I don't know exactly how this character is climbing, a, like, you know, smooth wooden walls, but, you know. Not going to question it too hard. How does Link climb anything Link climbs? Okay, so we've got some kind of spidery thing. Nice, okay. So we unblocked the wind tower by picking up whatever this thing is I picked up. And it has opened a door down below. Oh, with a chest on a red floor. All right, well, whatever this is, chucking it off the cliff. Oh, no, I'm not. Okay, where is that red floor? Okay, so we got a green floor around the actual tower. Uh, these little Z-fighting patches are probably really hard to fight. Um, all right. I definitely don't want to leave until I've found that. Oh, 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 I see it, I see it, I see it. Machinist top. A standard uniform worn by machinists in Midden. Machinists will always make sure each set has its own unique modifications for their own particular needs. All right, I'll have to try on some of these outfits in a bit. Is there anything else I've missed on this... The space is so complicated. I feel like I'm in danger of missing something. There was already one semi-hidden chest. Okay, oh, oh, here we go, chest. Okay, got some money from that. I think I want to get up to 215 because that's what's going to let me buy all the beetle parts. I don't know if I should expect to find more money chests in this area, though. <laughs> yeah, Radith Court, that's how it works. When my son is good, he gets to stream with me, and when, when, when I'm good, I get to stream with you. Probably done here, right? Probably. Hard to be sure. Where the crap is my bike? It's that way. I already climbed up this, right? This is nothing new. Oh, yeah. Nothing new at all. I'll just try to find the right direction to run so we can get back to my bike. Wait, what's over here? I don't think I've explored this space. Oh, some more money. Oh, I have almost enough for all the beetle bits. Just five more cuts. Cuts are what they call the currency here. Cuts are kind of like caps from Fallout. They're like little bits of ancient metal that these folks barely understand and use for money. Oh, I, whenever I find a hidden thing, it just makes me want to look for more hidden things. I, 
can't remember where I've already been. Partly because the lighting changed since the last time I was, since, you know, when I first started climbing. So I don't know if this is a place I've been before. I don't think I recognize that campfire, but who knows. Oh, that's cute! Look at that little... Oh, it's like an Olmec head or something. Alright, I think I'm making a command decision that I've searched this enough. Oh, is that my bike? Oh, it really does have a, a new color scheme to it. Wow. All right, let's head back to that machinist. I'm hoping maybe Utari will give me a little bit more cash so I can buy all those beetle bits. I'm betting that the merchant badges come from buying all the stuff from a merchant. That's going to be my guess. Let's see if that's true. Awesome Twitch dude asks, um, if I uh, spend enough channel points, can I get you to go back to a mohawk? I'm not sure what, I mean, this, this I, I did just barely get a haircut, and I went for sort of a, in sort of the faux hawk direction. I'm not sure what you would get out of me getting, having a mohawk exactly. Wait, what's that tower right there? Is that, is that just a camp, or is that someplace new? It's in the direction of the camp, but I think it's too close. Let's see what this is. Wow, this really is a fascinating game. And there's kind of more to... Like, I knew that this was kind of a small-scale indie game, so I kind of didn't expect it to be as big as it is. What is up here? A oh, one of these collectibles. Got a chum egg. Hey there, chum. So there's some place I can deliver these. I don't know where it is exactly. See you later, I am Fenwick. Thanks for hanging out in the chat. Yeah, I am not surprised that folks are needing to go to bed. Uh, it is getting pretty late. When I am maintaining a healthy schedule, I usually am in bed at, <laughs> by now, too. Uh, lately, I have not, though. Lately, I've been having a lot of trouble sleeping, so I figure that uh, what better thing to do when I'm unable to sleep than stream with you all. Senior Sausage says, after your playthrough on Darkest Dungeon, I honestly had to get the game and got it for $7.99 on PS4. Yeah, so after watching me play it with Cloudcraft, that is a really good time to get it because I think you ended up with much better insights into how, the play, into how to play the game well than you would have gotten just from me. Wait, is this... This is the... Okay, this is the same cartographer spot. For a second, I, it looked a little bit unfamiliar. I thought that maybe it was a different place, but it's not. Yeah, I'll actually, so I actually downloaded it, so uh, Darkest Dungeon's on Game Pass, and so I, I downloaded it to my uh, console, partly just because I'm really curious how it how it plays with a controller. It's so mouse-centric on the PC, and uh, I tried to play on controller uh, on the PC because my um, cursor was going all weird during the stream, which, you know, if you watch the stream, you probably noticed that, um, but Cloudcraft was like, no, don't use a controller, <laughs> and so I was like, okay. Fine. So it is probably inconvenient, right? Uh, the main reason he said that was because uh, he he thought I would miss out on a lot of tooltips if I was limited in what I could highlight. Because it seems like it, it might very well, you know, not let you highlight things that um, uh, that that just aren't available right then if you're using a controller. 
Oh, look at these shadows. Oh my gosh. Okay, the, the, the really quick, like, snap of the fingers change to the sky is a little odd, but, uh... Yeah, just watching the shadows play across the walls and stuff in this game is crazy. Oh, and look, I think my UI just died again. Interesting. Utara greets me warmly. How may I help? Utara's delight is obvious, and I see it even in my approach. They radiate with energy. <gasps> you did it! Thank you, and well done, both of you. Did you have much trouble? None at all! Of course not, and why would you? You were meant to do it. Now for your, I won't say reward, now for what you're owed. Utari produces a machinist badge, holding it out for me to take. You may have been late in coming, but you, uh, here you are where you're meant to be. I give you this badge not only in recognition of where you have been and what you have done, but in honor of one of many possibilities, that you may, if you so choose, become one of us, who speak the unheard language of Samoon and her vast connections. This badge is but one, and you will need to earn more from others who carry them. But if and when you do, the caster will know what you have chosen, and you may wear the mask of the machinist. I thank Utari for it, and tell them I have much to consider. But for just a moment, I hear the faintest ringing in my left ear, distant and deep, like a river below the sands. Listen! I'm assuming that I'm hearing Navi from, uh, from Legend of Zelda. Um... Okay, so this merchant, I don't quite have enough money. I wanted to buy all the bits at once. I don't have enough money for it, though. I can pick up a bucket and chuck it at somebody. So there's that. Um, oh, 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 a collectible dude up there. How do I get up there? Can I just climb this? Come here, little collectible dude. Yes. Worm eggs. Yes. I don't know why I'm collecting those, but I sure am. Oh, there's another one way over there. Wait, how am I supposed to get up that? I don't think I can climb that. I wonder if I'm going to get climbing upgrades at some point. Because, yeah, I'm pretty sure climbing up this is not an option. Is there something taller nearby that I can float down from? Can I climb that tree? Is this a tree? Oh, wait, there's something else in the distance. Ooh. Let's go find out what that is. I think I've been... I've been streaming this for a while. So I got the turbine going. So yeah, so maybe this is the episode in which this is the episode about me fixing the turbine. We should do another episode about me finding out what the crap that ship thing is. So yeah, so let's let's wrap up this episode because you know, if I'm to spend a bunch of time streaming this, I should get multiple YouTube videos out of it. That's how I roll. So um, if you want to subscribe to my channel, you can click that button that will appear later on YouTube. Uh, I'm going to keep playing Sable right now, so that video is going to go there. And you can click that if you want to keep going. If you're watching me live, we're just going to keep playing right now. It's getting hot in this room. I'm going to start pointing a fan at myself. 